During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about soil sampling, not in fields, but in pastures. Well, this may be a little bit strange for some farmers and ranchers that are listening to the show thinking, wait a second, I soil test out in my crop ground, but now I have to do it in my pastures too? Well, it makes a lot of sense. If we can improve the fertility content and balance out in the soil in your pasture, we can get more grass growth and we can graze more head of livestock per acre. Yeah, what it comes down to is we want you to start thinking about your pasture as a crop. Think about grass as a crop. What does grass need more than just nitrogen? Okay, I realize you're probably already throwing nitrogen out there, but we want you to look at what does your soil have in terms of soil pH, organic matter. How about all the different micronutrients? How are you doing on P and K and sulfur and all these different things? Because again, if you can get those nutrients right, you get yourself in balance out in that pasture, you are gonna have more grass, just like Darren said. One of the fun things about Ag PhD Radio is we get to talk to farmers and ranchers from all over the world. And it's interesting to me, the guys that are really starting to get the most out of their pastures are grid soil sampling, Brian, and they're well, even getting smaller grids. The guys that yeah, are doing five acre grids are doing even smaller grids. I want you to think about this for just a second. As you drive throughout much of the United States and really all around the world, which acres are crop ground and which acres are pastured? Okay, well the pasture acres are the ones that are too tough to, to raise crop on, right? And usually that means there are hills, there are valleys, there are, there are issues, okay? So the point is there's more variability in the average pasture than there is in the average crop field. And we already know as crop farmers that grid or zone sampling is way better than composite sampling. So you can identify all the little problem areas in your field and put it this way, you can figure out where best to invest your fertilizer dollars. So what I'm trying to say here is it makes complete sense that in the pasture, you're gonna have even more success with grid or zone sampling than you would even in crop ground. All right, now here's the other thing I'd like you to consider. If you've got livestock that you have to balance a ration for, what are all the things that you're looking at? You're looking at a lot of these things Brian was just talking about with different micronutrients. Well, if you start buying micronutrients to put into a cattle ration or, or really any livestock ration, that's very expensive. That's the most expensive part of that ration for you. If we can feed the soil, the soil will feed the grass and the grass will feed the livestock and so forth. That's a great cycle, but it all starts with our soil. If we don't have those nutrients out there in the soil, we're gonna run short in our livestock and you're gonna see performance issues and livestock health issues if you don't balance things right. So again, we would really encourage you do a good job of soil testing on your farm and on your ranch because that is absolutely going to help you improve all crop production, including grass production. One other thing you'll certainly want to be on top of is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 